Anyway, okay. we got the chiller mounted up. The reason we're doing this, uh, one of my OG customers, uh, Chris Brito, Zillow Full Boost on Instagram and YouTube, he did an inner chiller a long time ago, uh, and I was skeptical at first, and I dynoed his car, and it was insane. Like we were, It was like a hot 100-degree Miami day, and we had charge air temps at like 40 degrees. Like there was frost on the intercoolers. It was great. Um, and ever since then, I've been, well, not frost. I think it was condensation, but anyway. It was really cold and we were like oh this works really well we should definitely do it and so ever since then i've wanted to do it i wanted to do it on my old q i just never got around to it and uh, when we bought the z i was like you know the first mod we're gonna do we're not gonna do the heat exchanges none of that i just want to put a chiller and then hopefully put like a fender tank or something uh, hopefully ams or someone comes out with one of those uh, and we'll toss it in and basically the idea is that you're cooling and most of you probably already know this you're cooling your intercooler fluid for that for the for the charge air because uh, these are air to water not air to air so you're cooling it via your AC line. So what this is, is you have the, the Freon coming in and out of this and it cools down, um, it cools down the water for the intercoolers. And essentially, uh, it works the same as a heat exchange if you want to think about it, except instead of using outside air to cool the water, what you're doing is you're using refrigerant to cool the water. Now, the reason you want to add a reservoir or something is because when, as most of you know, when you go wide open throttle, the, the compressor shuts off. And so you want enough water in the tank that's super cooled that it can cool down throughout your run so you want to have enough to run through like a quarter mile or whatever uh, now the nice thing about these is despite how um, you know a lot of Q50 owners say the bricks on these are terribly designed by bricks I mean the intercoolers up here um, compared to most air to water systems these are actually really good I mean compared to the, the stock ones that come on a BMW compared to the stock ones that come on Audis these are actually really efficient for what they are uh, so we're really excited to see what the Z is going to do with that uh, so we've, we wanted to get a video of it being mocked up but we kind of me and Alex kind of went uh, a little too ham. We took off parts we didn't take off. There's, I mean, there's no instructions out there. All data has no data on taking off the bumper. So we just kind of went at it. Uh, we took off all the support yep. out here and then we popped <laughs> the bumper off. And then at that point, we're like, you know what? It's too late to make a DIY now anyway. I mean, it's nice that the way the heat exchanger is positioned, the line just goes straight onto the chiller where if you mount it right there on, on the crash bar, you don't really have to do anything else. Uh, I'm sure most people will disapprove of where we mounted the chiller. Uh, we might move it if there is an issue with fitment. Um, it's also, you know, not a great idea to put it right in front of the crash bar, but essentially <laughs> we're, we're removing this foam yep. piece in, you know, in, in an effort to put the chiller right there. This is the way it obstructs airflow to the condenser and everything behind it as little as possible because you already had something blocking this anyway. And the super long nose of the Z, yeah, just there's, there's so much space, space in front. in front of the bumper, exactly. Yep. Um, and then essentially all we're doing now is we've teed into the suction line um, and we're gonna tee into uh, the liquid line? I hope I'm saying that right. It should be, yeah, the liquid line. Yeah, Cause the that's the line. one that will go yeah. to. And then that those are gonna go into the chiller and then we'll be all set. Uh, so hopefully by the end of today, we'll have some results and we'll show you some really cold charge air temps while idling and we'll get on the dyno and see what we make. We made 446 on a stock, stock heat exchanger and stock cooling system. Um, I'm expecting we're going to pick up about 20 wheel with the chiller. So this should be interesting. Uh, but yeah. Say hi, Ronnie. That's Ronnie. <laughs> okay, so now this should be mocked up mostly in the final form. We're going to install this. So the chiller is mounted in the front of the crash bar. We have everything all pumped up in here. So I don't know if I explained this before, but uh, we have to we have to cut a section of the OEM hard line for the for the AC. Uh, this is the li liquid line. So we cut off a section, put a splice into a soft line, and that soft line kind of snakes around and comes back here into the the drag valve that comes with the FI chiller kit and from there it goes back down into a T but it goes straight first into the other end of the original line so then this T comes off all the way in here into the dryer and then that goes in to the chiller now and then the suction line we teed it off as well this is not the best job, I don't think. At least not the best way we could have done this. But we just teed off that line to go all the way into this line, into the chiller. And if this copper coil, we're going to attach it at the 11 o'clock or the 1 o'clock position. 
with a clamp for that all to, for that all to work. And the water lines are plumbed the way they've already have been before. That's it. But we just started the car for a little bit. And it's already frosting up. Dang. Look at that. Straight ice. Are you happy, Hussein? Very happy. Why won't my Audi do this? <laughs> yeah, because we messed up. Apparently. Okay, just real quick to show you guys the, uh, the wiring for the solenoid or the drag valve. This is what opens and closes the, uh, the valve where it blocks the AC towards the cabin so all the AC can go towards the, uh, the inner chiller for maximum cooling. Um, uh, according to FI, you're supposed to use a relay off of this, but we're lazy right now. We're just gonna wire it straight up. So we put one of the black wire off the valve, the solenoid to a ground, which is right here. Then the red wire, which is where it gets power, all the way to, up, to the back, into the footwell, because that's where we're, where we're gonna mount the switch right here and also uh, where we're gonna draw power from for the switch as well and then we wire another ground to the foot wall right there we found a bolt right there and we use that as a ground and then we connect all three of those um, according to the diagram from the instructions from FI onto the switch so that way in the cabin you can just turn this on and off to give the chiller maximum cooling or uh, have cabin AC. We have everything tucked away and tidied up. All the wiring's tucked in there. Uh, you can see it through the door and of course inside. But yeah, we're going to strap this onto the dyno now and it should gain a little bit just from the cooler temps. All right, so this actually just came in, uh, just got dropped off. It's a package from AMS. So we are gonna swap out the intakes now that they're here to ones that actually are specific, specific for the car. Because these were, let me turn the brightness up a little bit. These were meant for a Q50 that has a little bit more room in the engine bay. So the fitment isn't great. We kind of have to like jam that in there. It's tight, but like not ideal. So we're gonna swap them out and honestly, I think these look a little better, too Very nice packaging by the way from AMS We got all the hardware Here's the tubes that goes to your turbo your inlets. I'm assuming those are brackets for to mount These are and these are bigger math housings I think they're three inch I believe so. But yeah, it should be pretty cool. And there you go. Well, let's put these on and see what's up. Okay, we're like two minutes in to this install. Um, so we already have a slight issue with these intakes. Not at the fault of AMS, but because the um, the inner chiller we're running, we're running all these AC lines in the area that the intake box needs to go. And, uh, and we're also running these AC hoses through the intake snorkel where the AMS box uses. So we either have to really modify these boxes, cut, cut the entire, pretty much the entire side of it off, or just run the open filter uh, without the box. It won't look as cool, but you know, uh, it works. So, we're probably just gonna run open filters for now. Yep, it is what it is. Sure, I'll plug this in. Okay. So, I have the EQ tech connected finally. And, um, 
I can't flash it because it's writing a test to make sure I don't break this ECU, I guess. Today we're just going to do a few revisions on the car to get it dialed in more on, oh, focus please, there we go, to get the car dialed in more with the interchiller because it's writing so much cooler charger attempts now. So Hussein is going to send me a new file. Uh, I take a log on the dyno, I send it, and then he sends me a new file. There we go. Like that, and now I can just flash. Oh, that was fast. Now, I just follow the instructions on the screen. There we go. That's all done. And I can just start the car. Run it and then see what it does. Things up too, but all right, you got these annoying ants. This is how they're gonna take care of them. Oh, god, this control doesn't do shit. Someone get a lighter. What? I don't have a lighter. We don't have a lighter at the shop. Someone get a lighter or a blowtorch or something. Oh my god. Alright, burnt some of the leaves. <laughs> yeah, let's go that way. Ethanol burns well. Yeah. I get great joy from burning ants. Fire ants especially. Black ants are chill. They're fun. Fire ants deserve every bit of this. You guys are wondering why you're uh, not getting your revisions and your, your emails replied? This is why. Oh. Oh, good timing. Guess what we just did? Come check it out. Hop out. You remember that anthill? Yeah. I got tired of it, so I poured <laughs> ethanol on it. <laughs> oh my god. Well, anyways, we got Mo's car here now. I guess we never show this car on the channel, but pretty clean. Tees. <laughs> this one's slow though. All right, so these are the numbers for today. Oh well, sorry for the background noise because we there's stuff going on at the shop right now. Our best run today was 440 horsepower and 537 torque. Um, that's, that's still very good. Uh, it is a little warmer today, so that could affect it as well. But, um, Hussein just said that the inner chiller, it does add power sometimes, most of the time. But, uh, in our case, it didn't add that much power, but that's okay because, uh, during the logs, our charger temp was very, very consistently low. Much lower than before. Uh, if I can, I'm gonna go... See if I can pull it up and show you guys what the log looks like uh, from the beginning of the run to the end of the run. Um, but it was running pretty, pretty cool. And we're doing these runs back to back and there's no uh, heat soak at all. And I think that's going to be the biggest advantage for us for when we track the car. Because we're not going to have any heat soaking issues and we're going to have consistently 
uh, consistently cold temps for consistent power. And I think right now we're going to throw on some, um, I believe they're Hoosers DR2s, uh, strike radials onto the Z. They're leftovers from our uh, Q50 that we never got to use. So they're not the biggest and the uh, greatest tire uh, we can run, but it's all we have, and we, want, we really want to get this car out to the track uh, tonight if, or tomorrow night if possible so we can uh, get the launch control dialed in. Um, and because we don't have a quarter mile track anymore in Houston, we have to go to an eighth mile track to get the launch dialed in before we can go to the um, quarter mile track somewhere else. So that's kind of a hassle, but it is what it is. It's, you know, it takes us a little longer to get numbers out for you guys because we don't have access to a quarter mile track uh, with good prep. So yeah, uh, we'll see you guys there. Ready to die? Why am I driving this? Because I don't want to drive it, and you're the only other one that fits. Alex, this yeah. wants to his, car. Car. his slow I've black never, wing. I've never, I've never, you're the one here. Yeah. You don't want to it. leaked already once. So I got different ones. I didn't get from It's like your Supra, but slower. I never yeah. watched my car either. I didn't get from Big Lucy. First one was from Big Lucy. I think Jax. Say hi to YouTube. I want a one. Four today. It's not gonna happen. Not on these tires. Wow. <laughs> Yo, do we have the tool to press out the bushing? Do we have the tool to press out the bushing for the diff? Oh, does this look like a real performance shop to you? Uh... <laughs>